Good morning. Fear is an emotion that holds a lot of people back or emotion and a feeling that holds a lot of people back. And I'm reading a really interesting book at the moment, uh, which kind of backs up a lot of things that I have spoken about in the past as far as um, like metaphysical disease. And metaph me metaphysical disease is like an explanation of you know, emotions that attach to a certain illness, for example. So for me, um, I've done a lot of therapy, uh, I guess, psychology wise, but I've also, you know, had a own, uh, my own coach where I've done NLP and ECT, which is like emotional change therapy, which kind of brought out a lot of fear and terror, like the feelings that I was holding on to from, from the past as a child, essentially. Um, and fear and terror are very much linked to the type of illness that I had. And this book I'm reading at the moment is called The Myth of Normal by Dr. Gabor Mate. That's M-A-T-E with a little thing on it. Uh, he's from Hungary. So he, essentially he, he's a, 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 you know, a doctor, practitioner, pediatrician, uh, who's really uh, kind of take, taken a big deep dive into, you know, trauma and, you know, emotional damage that kind of, uh, leads to illness in life. So I'm only th th uh, through like the first two chapters of this book, but it's really, really interesting how it just comes back to the exact same thing uh, that I had learnt through doing my change, emotional change therapy in regards to how emotions are, are linked so heavily to different types of diseases, even down to like gender, like women that feel this particular type of emotion uh, end up with uh, manifesting into breast cancer for example and all these different types of illnesses uh, sorry emotions and traumas that lead to illness and the funny thing is when you think about it if you look around you if you look in modern society the amount of people that are ill and ill in a sense of like long-term chronic illness right like diabetes uh, high blood pressure high cholesterol all these types of things heart disease um, and most of these things are all linked to an emotional state. Uh, it's got so much to do with your social and your emotional well-being. It's one of those it's funny, funny thing is two of those key areas of well-being that I talk about all the time, the things that I kind of worked on. And before I kind of even had this link of knowing how linked these illnesses were to these emotions, it's something that I just generally, from a holistic perspective, was like, I need to work on this area of my life because I feel like it's really affecting me. And part of it is like, really kind of digging deep and being curious about you know certain circumstances in your life whether it be illness whether it be uh, emotions you have around fear or whatever it is and really digging deep into where it comes from and the funny thing is is like I started to work on myself before I really figured out you know where my I, I don't when I talk about trauma everybody everybody experiences some type of trauma in their life whether it's uh, in this book specifically, they, they relate to them as small T's and big T's. Small T's being like little traumas, so little things that happen over a long period of time that have an emotional effect on your personality and your psyche. And then big T's, things like getting a cancer diagnosis and going through something like that, being in an accident, go, um, you know, being sexually abused as a child or uh, being raped or being in an accident, things like this, they're the big kind of teas, the big kind of trauma incidents, which lead to lifelong changes in your psyche because of the emotional state you end up in after experiencing that. And then these little teas, like I said, are just ongoing things like, and that could be, for example, coming home from school every day and then your dad, you know, saying, yeah, yeah, you're, you're not good enough, you're, did terrible at school, you're a dumbass, like all that sort of shit. That, that, that's the kind of shit that kind of like builds up over time and turns into these emotional blockages. So for a big thing for me, it was fear. Like for a lot of my life, I've lived in this state of fear. And not like, I don't have like fears of particular things, well, except for clowns. People that know me, I was always shit scared of clowns, which is something that happened to me at my fourth birthday at Hungry Jack's, but that's another story. Uh, but I've kind of got over that now, mostly. Um, I'm not talking about fears like that, like arachnophobia or anything like that. I'm talking about fears in a social setting, fears in chasing your dreams, fears in following a sport, fears in not being good enough, like all these types of things. And I had mo uh, uh, blockages with fear, you know, uh, quite evidently in social settings for one. Like it was always hard for me. I've been a bit of a social introvert and I've always had this situation where I've been kind of fearful to like 
go into social situations, I get anxiety about it, fear about meeting new people, all this sort of thing. And that kind of extended into my adult life and me trying to take risks, like start a business, do all these type of things. I had fear of failures, uh, you know, fear, fear of not being good enough at what I do, fear of going into a situation or a meeting or a board meeting or a presentation, and, um, people just laughing at me and rejecting me and all these type of things. That all kind of completely normal fears that people have. and. Uh, it's completely natural to have these fears, obviously, because your brain works in a way where it tries to protect you. It doesn't want you to get in an awkward situation or a scary situation. Um, so it throws out all these different, um, you know, signals and chemicals to be like, hey, tread lightly here. Uh, we don't want to get injured or hurt. Um, your fight or flight mechanism basically kicks in. But there's to a point where it's like a constant thing that can potentially affect your life. And that's something that was really happening with me. And it's funny because um, this is something I sh tried to work on before I'd even sort of went through my chronic illness and that trauma situation. Uh, but after then I had went through it and done a real, you know, dug deep right into uh, the emotional connections to my illness and doing my emotional change therapy and doing my psychology. Even when I did the psychology, right? So I did a massive block of psychology, probably like 18 months worth of psychology uh, before I even went into my own sort of personal coaching and doing this emotional change therapy. And even through that time through the psychologist, there was a bunch of things I thought were kicking off my fears and my anxieties in life. But until I had actually sat down and dug deep and done this emotional change therapy I didn't even know what it was that was creating these fears and for me I'm not going to go into too much deep detail for out of respect for family but um, I had a situation growing up where I was threatened by a family member I would experienced like not a large amount of physical abuse but enough physical abuse to be like you know really have a massive effect on my psyche and how I actually introduce my people the fact of even like shaking somebody's hand and having a fear and um, that first connection of meeting somebody and the nerves that I would get around that and then obviously also walking into a meeting or a boardroom having to present having to talk to people having to be in a social situation where I had to introduce myself and, and talk about myself and I had realized I dug right down deep enough to figure out where that moment in time happened and where it came and for me it was these small t's right it was something that every time I would come across this certain individual a thing would happen and it would continuously happen all through my life um, until that person obviously left it, left left this lifetime. So it's something that I've constantly had to kind of sweep out, right? And it's like this, there's there's many ways to do this. It's like something you really have to work on. It's like a micro goal that you have to work on every single day. And there's ways that I can relate this to sort of how you work and and things that you do and fitness and life and all that sort of stuff. But it was really quite evident for me because like. I'd go through these situations in life where I'm trying, really trying to push forward. I'm really trying to grow as a person. I'm trying to grow as a person professionally. I'm trying to grow as a person socially. I'm trying to become this like certain person that I really want to be. And then the important thing is like really having a good, really fucking solid network around you. Because you know I've even had a point to even recently where one of my really really good close friends was like a brother to me. And you need people around you that help you grow, help you push you, but are completely honest with you at the same time. And it, to the point where it even said like, you know what, man, you're so smart, you've got so much potential, you're going in the right direction all the time, but you've just got these little things that hold you back. Like I introduce you to a person and you just, you know, you go, oh, hey, I'm Tom. And then you just sit there and you're awkward and you're silent and you're a bit of an introvert, but he's like, I don't understand because that's not the time I know because I can prepare you for another situation where we go meet 20 people and party with them and you're the fucking life of the party. I don't really understand these one-on-one -on -one social interactions that you have where you get awkward and it's this like fear that really holds you back. And I had already known that, I'd already been working on that and I was so appreciative that it was pointed out to me from a really, really close friend. And you need people like that around you. So that's that's one of the biggest steps, is people being open and honest with you. Not, call them, not kind of mollycoddling around things that you might have, but really pushing people pushing you to work on your fears. And it's not about like taking a leap, stepping to the edge and jumping off completely. It's about doing these micro goals. And like I said, I'm gonna relate it, relate it to how it works in business. That's the exact conversation yesterday in regards to like cold sales, because that's the thing that I'm doing right now. And there's fears, right? Your first fear is the walking in the door, doing your intro, introducing yourself to this person, trying to gauge, you know, what their personality and mood is like. 
trying to find an end to the conversation, right? And for me, it's a marketing product. So I come in, hey, I'm Tom from such and such, we've got this product, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of shortening right down. And then you'll have like a receptionist or a gatekeeper that essentially just says, uh, you know, we, we write, we do all that stuff ourselves, we're doing that marketing, which they're not because I've already done the research into their business before I walked in. And then there's a situation there where there's a micro goal to set to be like, you can either go, oh, okay, no worries, objection, I don't know what to do with that, I'll turn around and walk out. And the next step of breaking through the next little barrier of fear is being like, well, actually, I did a little bit of research before I came in and I checked out and you guys actually aren't doing that and that's why I've walked in today. And they go, oh, okay, that's a little step, that's a little barrier. And the only reason I'm using that as an example is just tiny little things you can do. There's tiny little things you can do every day um, to kind of work, whether it's writing down every single day when you come across a fear, writing down uh, what do you think held you back. And that's something that I haven't been doing, the journaling side of it, which I've started doing this week because uh, the more I kind of try and, I'm constantly trying to sweep this fear shit out of my life to make sure that I can go forward in direction and personal development and really take a step forward and go in leaps and bounds con compared to where I am because I know that something is held holding me back and I know that I've done a lot of work on sweeping it out but it creeps back in every now and again. Part of the reason I'm doing this cold sales job is because I'm like that will scare the shit out of me. It's given me massive fears in so many ways. Just the first overall so social interaction then the someone rejecting me and telling me you're shit get out the door all that sort of thing the reason I did it because I'm like if I repetitively do this every day I'm gonna break down those fears and yesterday was actually the first time I really noticed a difference I walked I can't remember what I was doing I walked up somewhere there was somebody sitting out in front of the gym and and I looked at this person usually I'd probably like walk straight past them and not engage in that conversation because I'd be in my own head and but as I'm walking in I'm noticing people and I'm going oh hey my name's Tom what are you doing here and we started this conversation and made a really good connection straight away. And that's for me just working on this job, working through these fears, setting these micro, little micro goals every day. And it's just about, and you know, the last video I did about habits and rituals, it's about forming a new habit. It takes time. And for me, it's it's been years. It's been years. I've done the psychology. Now I've done the emotional change therapy. I've swept a lot of that shit out. But I'm still finding it roadblocking me every single day. So when I'm finding it roadblocking me every single day, I, f I figure out, I, I go, what can I do better there? Even to the point where I've been into businesses in this uh, current um, employment setting, and someone's given me a couple of objection, uh, rejections, and then they go, no, look, get out. And I go and walk out, and I stand out in the street, and I go, Fuck, I could have done that way better. I should have said this, I should have said that. I've actually done the more difficult thing, turn back around, walk back in the door and go, mate, actually, I was just thinking about something. I should have given you this piece of information. I didn't give it to you the first time. And I've actually got into a full conversation and gone through to a quote from being rejected the first time, walking back in again. And this is just the constant repetitive thing of forming a habit to just face those little fears, like one little step at a time, one little increment at a time. Um, so it's just a journey, right? So just try and form new habits around facing those fears. But the, most of all, the really important thing is digging deep and being curious about where it came from. Because like I said, it took me a long time to figure that out. All different types of therapies, all different types of meditations. Until someone pointed out to me, that's a moment in time that I go, shit, that's where it came from. So you've got to dig right down deep. Think about it. Think about why you might have trust issues, why you might have fear issues, why, why you might have anxiety. Go back in your timeline as a child and figure out, you know, maybe this was this point in time and I really need to get over that. I really need to get over that point in time because it's not serving me anymore. Uh, I'm going to leave it there because this video is getting a bit too long, but please always comment and like and give me some feedback on these videos because it really kind of helps me. I'm getting feedback here and there from people saying it's helping him this way, helping him that way, and it just absolutely makes me stoked, so I'd like to hear more from people.